I'm gonna show you how to create this effect in Photoshop without downloading any brushes or plugins. So let's get started. What's up guys, Thrill here and as you can see this is the final output and you can also do it in color version. It's uh, on adjustment layer so you can select color or black and white as you please. Now to create this effect, I will be using this picture from deventart.com and if you want to use it, the download link is in video description. Now let's start the effect and you can just double click here and unlock it. Then let's remove the background and for that right click here and select your magnetic lasso tool. Uh, I tried quick selection, didn't work so magnetic it is. Now if you look at the selection as you can see I ignored all of this part and also I didn't take care at the bottom because we will be erasing all of that so don't worry about it. Most important part is this little bit of hair and this the face and this part. So once that is done go and click on your refine edge option and here use white background because that will be our background in effect. So I'm gonna use this one and see if the hair looks proper. Perfect, now go and hit OK. After that go and apply the layer mask, click on this third icon. Then we have to make the canvas bigger. So for that go and select a crop tool from here and make sure delete crop pixel is turned off. Then zoom out a little bit and make the canvas bigger like this. This is big enough I think, uh, yep. Then go and confirm it. After that go and select your move tool and move him a little bit here. Then press Ctrl T. Hold your shift key and make it a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna rotate uh, so that the particle when they come out they match the uh, direction properly. So that's enough and let's make it a little bit more big. Perfect then go and confirm it. Now let's create the background and for that we have to create a new blank layer. But this time I'm gonna hold my control key and then create a blank layer. So the layer will be under my subject. Then go and select the paint bucket tool and right click and paint bucket. Then go and select your white color and fill it. Now double click on your this model layer and let's name it backup in case we screw up so we don't have to select again. Then let's make a copy of it, press Ctrl J and hide this layer, we don't need it. So go and throw it under layer one. Now activate your backup copy, this one and let's name it model. After that go and select your layer mask here, it's really important, make your layer mask active. Then go and select your brush tool, right click brush and in the brush I'm selecting a regular round brush with somewhere around like 60 to 70 percent hardness. Then go and remove this parts, oops, we need black color to remove it. So go and remove. And let's say if you want to bring something back, you can just simply switch to white color and bring it back just like this. So the setup is ready, now let's go and create new brush. So for that go to file and create a new document. In the document my size will be 1000 by 1000 uh, in pixels and the resolution will be 100 and then go and hit OK. Now go and select this square rectangular marquee tool uh, and you have to make a selection. Here's a tip, when you make a selection uh, start it way outside the box here. Then make a selection something like this. So you can select entire border. After that go and create a blank layer from here. Then make sure your selection is still active and you still have your marquee tool uh, here. Right click and select where is it? Stroke. In the stroke color should be absolute black. No else. It has to be black. Hit OK. Uh, and the width is somewhere around 40. You can try different. Uh, I think 20 to 50 pixel anywhere would work. Uh, then go and hit OK and also my location is inside. Hit OK. Now we have to remove the selection. So go to select and deselect. Selection is gone. After that go to edit, define brush preset and let's give it some friendly name. After that go and hit OK. Now I'm gonna go back to my document here and select my brush tool. And if you scroll down here you can see this is the brush that we just created. So looks pretty cool. Now we have to make it a little bit smaller. So use your bracket keys for that. And after that go and click on this option here. So it will bring up this panel where you have where you can do really cool stuff. So I'm gonna select my brush tip shape and the spacing I will increase it a little bit not too much. Then I'm gonna go to space, uh, shape dynamics. 
and here my angle jitter is somewhere around 100% uh, minimum diameter is 60 and the size jitter is 100% you can decrease it a little bit uh, and then go to scattering in the scatter bring it down way low uh, I think this is more than enough 133% and in the count one should be enough now let's go and try it so you have to make sure your layer mask is active in the model and then your color is white now go and start painting here so you will start seeing this really cool effect and what our target here is that uh, let's go and close it uh, I'm gonna show you a trick hold your alt key and click on your layer mask so now if I zoom in you can see we have this little soft fringe we have to remove that so I'm gonna go and paint here until that goes away completely and you can feel free to take it a little bit outside not too much though so let's go and do it now to make it normal just hold your alt key and click on your mask again and it's normal and as you can see the effect looks much better now as you can see I did a little bit too much of square but it's fine you can take care in your own file so let's go and create uh, the background boxes so for that go and create a new blank layer and let's name it just now to create the background boxes as you can see I have the same brush uh, but in the setting we have to do some changes first of all go to your brush tip shape and here increase the spacing so the boxes don't overlap too much okay that looks good now go to your shape dynamics and here go and make the size jitter all the way 100% and in the minimum diameter you can select a number so your smaller box won't be smaller than this so I'm gonna keep it somewhere around 40% angle jitter 100% now go back to scattering now in the scattering it can be a little bit tricky so you will have to do trial and error so I'm gonna go and first of all make it all the way 1000 uh, and try so I think this looks pretty good but let's confirm it by making our brush a little bit bigger because the uh, as far the boxes go the bigger they will get so I'm gonna go and make it somewhere like this okay it's way too big and also we need to decrease the scatter a little bit so I'm gonna keep it somewhere 900 now let's make the brush smaller and try again now that's looking good I'm gonna press ctrl Z so scattering is fine now let's go to transfer this is last option in the transfer I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around 50% not too much flow jitter 0% you can experiment with any of this by the way that's the what effect is about so because we added 50% opacity jitter some of the boxes will be lighter and it won't look really heavy to the eyes so I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere like let's try 30% uh, and let's do it again okay so the now boxes look pretty good I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller yep looking pretty good and if it goes on the face or somewhere around here <laughs> here somewhere uh, don't worry about it I will show you how to erase it Now let me zoom in and do you see this white space here we need to fill it up completely so the transition from this head to these boxes look proper so for that go and make your brush a tiny bit smaller and in the brush tip shape I'm gonna go and reduce the spacing so we can fill it up faster and it doesn't go any other places too much and same with the scatter I'm gonna reduce it a little bit then go and start painting here So as you can see the first one didn't look really good so I just created another layer and did it again and took me around like two minutes so this effect is really easy and fast so uh, now let's remove it from the face and let's uh, adjust the corners so for that simply go and select your eraser tool you can apply the layer mask but it's just too much you have to go and select the brush change the settings and it's just annoying so I'm just gonna simply use eraser also here's a tip you know you can directly move it just go and select your move tool hold your shift key and make sure this layer is active and then you can see move it so if you want to fill up a little bit space you can cheat like this just go and move it you have this little white line here just move it a bit further and boom it's gone 
and also let's erase some boxes from here so all the crazy part is done now let's do some corrections so for that first of all i'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and this time select black and white now the thing about black and white is that it looks classy and it will help you blend your effect better if you screw up too much just simply go and make it black and white and you can hide your mistakes but at the same time if you do properly the color version also looks really good so i don't know vote in the comment section do you like color version better or do you like the black and white version better so the black and white is done now i'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and select curves in the curves i'm gonna make it a little bit brighter and then let's go and make it a tiny bit dark from here so we have that good contrast and let's make it brighter looking good go and close it now let's go and create the background so the layer 0 is our background activate it double click on it then go and select uh, the good old gradient overlay uh, here in the style I'm gonna go and make it where is it radial and make it reverse so the dark part is outside make the scale all the way 100 and the angle 180 so it's even more softer and the opacity somewhere around like 20 30 uh, percent however you like so 30 looks good hit okay so if i turn it on and off see looks much better now after the curves go and create new adjustment layer and this time i'm gonna go and select gradient map let's go to gradient map and here you see this violet and orange it's default you can go and hit okay now you can also use this output as your effect makes up for a pretty good dual tone effect uh, so go and close it but for this effect i'm gonna go and make my opacity to five percent uh, and confirm it so if i turn it on and off we have that really slight uh, yellow tint you can go up to 10 and here's a tip if you decide black and white uh, keep it under 10 uh, and if you go for like color version you can go and increase it a little bit more because uh, you have the colors in shirt and skin so this will complement it really nice so i'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around like 17 so that also looks really nice so i hope you realize that you can use this effect in many different ways just using color correction so that's it and this is the final output and i really hope that you guys learn something and don't forget to comment that do you like color version better or do you prefer the black and white and if you want to check out more tutorials by me, you can click on any of these boxes. Plus, you can also subscribe to my channel. So every time I upload a new video, you will get the update. Plus, it will take you to my YouTube channel where I have lots of Photoshop tutorials just waiting for you. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.